welcome to my channel look it's a red envelope day yay this just arrived this morning but i have some other things to show you too um this is the thread club from my local lns from tasmania if you are interested in signing up for these there will be a google form link and i think there's only space on the over a collections currently the others have wait lists so if you're interested you can put your name down on the wait list as well um if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. Ring the bell for a notification when I upload a video next and stick around to see some gorgeous colors. So I actually subscribe to one, two, three, four, five, five clubs. They've just recently added cottage garden threads and it's like, oh my goodness, yes, I'll support the Aldi's. Okay, first one, cab off the rank, is Weeks Dye Works. They started this off, I think I've been collecting this for nearly two years. No, a year? A year? Maybe a year. Um, they started off with these alphabetically. We are up to L. Oh, really? Interesting. I needed to get a lagoon. <laughs> I wonder if I've got it over there, because I went into the store and I bought one. Anyway, L, to start with, at, at the beginning, back at the beginning, is Latte. And it is very much like a latte. It's if you, next to my hair. You can't see tiddly squat. Hang on. Here's something I prepared earlier. A white screen. Sorry. A muddy envelope. Um, look at that variegation in that. That's just, it's just wild. Uh, this is one that you may want to do in a full cross. I tend not to do full crosses. I like the subtlety of blending my colors. Um, there are two ways that you can use a highly variegated like this. You can cut your length and then top and tail your two lengths, or you could top and tail your one longer length uh, so that the colors are different when you start stitching from the get go and you do a loop start. You can keep the two together and you can do a complete cross, um, which means that your color will gradually change depending on where you're traveling to. Or you can do the, I always confuse these, the Dutch method, I think, which is going all the way out with one, co with one color effectively, because by the time you come back on the row, it will have started to have changed. So you will get that very subtle, different color leg over the top. They are two ways that you two three ways that you can do color with variegated thread if you're not sure how it's going to behave do a swatch do a 10 by 10 somewhere on the edge and just do outs and backs various blends and um, see if see which one you actually like it might suit your pattern to be the more subtle in certain circumstances. In others, it may suit it to be very much a, an ombre going from very light to very dark. Um, so see how you go. Unravel it all. See how the repeat shows as well on the floss. Um, but yeah, there's just some tips for you on using a heavily variegated floss like this. Next one is lavender. And uh, Oopsie. That way around look at the variegation on this and again like it's spot on name wise have you ever looked at a lavender plant and you've seen the really really dark lavender and then the really really fine on the french lavenders and even the inside little flutes on the the lavender they're gorgeous so sorry numbers on those latte is one two two one and lavender is two three oh one um this is Lavender Rose. It's 2289. It's a much more subtle pink. Again, with that variegation. Um, I use the app Threadstash to catalog all of these so I know exactly what I've got. And they have a lot of the flosses now, the manufacturers, they've got catalogued so they just pop. You don't have to enter anything. So this one is Lemonade. It's triple one of four and it's creamy. Um, this one is oops, Lemon Chiffon and it's 2217 and look at that lemon. That's just gorgeous. And there is a bit of a subtle braid 
into pale as well there. And then we have Liberty, which is 2269. And look at that gorgeous red. That's like bang. But look at that. There's, there's some dark bits in there from the Scarlet. So you do get some subtlety. I love Weak Style Works for their subtle colour shifts and bold variegations. Um, I find um, Katie Landis, Black Needle Society, will use a lot of Weak Style Works and the variegations. And I love that it gives me the opportunity to have stockpiled and I have my own store in my craft room that I go first and raid because I've seen that it's there on my thread stash or I'm up to that letter and I know I should have it somewhere, somewhere because it might go missing. Now, Simply Shaker have two collections. Please bear with me. I'm going to stuff it up. There's two collections. There's the early numbers. And there's the high numbers, so over 7,000. One is heritage, one is heirloom kind of thing. There are two different kind of collections and they both suit whichever genre. You can go read up on it on their website. Royal Purple. I actually have this because I think this was in Harry Potter Frogwarts last year. Royal Purple. So 084. It is actually a very dark purple and that is really being horrible but oh there you go so you can see some of that purple there okay it's 0840 now in the brown we're rose garden 7068 and that it goes with my middle nail um rose garden my camera i don't know they don't like reds it's, it's more pink. This one is a richer pink and this one is Ruby Slipper 7100 and look at that gorgeous almost burgundy cherry red in there. Okay, Sage sounds familiar. Sage is a brown green. It's quite subtle but there is a pale green going through that pale brown. So that's 7101. Sarsaparilla 7015 is a brown, a nutty reddish toned brown. And finally, Schoolhouse Red 7052. And it is a, ooh, a brick red. I don't know, why would it be called a Schoolhouse Red? Would that be maybe what the lettering, a lot of the heritage lettering on... Uh, um, what's the word? Um, samplers, heritage samplers would have been done in a school red. Why did they do the stitching in red? Is it the only colour that they had available? Like, it's quite common. I'm seeing it coming up in Nashville a lot that they use red thread for the letters. Red to me was always like for correction and usually for saying you're wrong. My teachers all used red pen to correct my work. In fact, I had a boss who used to correct my reports too. <laughs> red pen. Yes. Anyway, classic color works. Okay, old oak tree, and these do have numbers too. These are CCTs. Um, this is one four five old oak tree, and it is a gold golden brown. Um, very much a subtle good thing with trees one thing i did read um was that if you're doing trees stitch up and down because then the variegation goes up and down rather than sideways because you know trees go up yeah um so that's one tip for natural environment stuff stitch up and down uh olive branch is a pale green and brown um, 152. Onion skin is a very pale brown. My onions are more brown, golden kind of colours than that. Uh, hang on. That one is 175. This is, I'm struggling with how to kind of pronounce it, Orangina? Orange. 
or her hmm it's orange and then na but is that orangina or orangena hmm. it's like a very unsubtle fruit salad it's pink and orange um through there and it's 106 and aura's oh my goodness aura's iris um is 216 and it does just look like a purple iris look at that dark and light in there if you've ever seen an iris you'll know what i'm talking about organza pink is 022 and you've got some subtleties with the dark and the light there so that's classic color works for february and where are we going next is the silk savoir soir d'alger um there is also a vera soir 100.3 if you like your bobbins 100.3 comes on a bobbin and single ply but these are seven ply and these are actually um eight yards eight sorry not eight five meters in length the names on these are fantastic and you can see these if you have thread stash um this is 1341 and it's a pale lilac purple so we're into the the purples they do get richer 1336 is this gorgeous purple 1335 is another one uh 1334 and they don't give the names they just give the numbers on these but they do have the names on the app uh 1326 and i think i have a printout of what all these names are and they're just so spot on for whatever they might call them so um you can visualize with the name what the color will is so very much enjoy those okay finally cottage garden threads if you've never used these before and um, you were confused by them, don't be. They actually have instructions on them these days. Um, the new wrapping is squared off top. The old wrapping is rounded. So the instructions are all there. So you pull on the left side. It dangles down to double that length. And that's your floss length. Um... This one is Bon Voyage PB03, variegated blue. Ooh, this is Bois Diff, and this is BR09. This is a traditional, hang on, traditional Brenda Ryan, traditional, as in French spelling, um, Bois Diff. Okay, now I have found that the cotton cottage garden threads are not in thread stash quite so well. Um, they have the numbers, but not necessarily the ones with the letters in front of them. Um, I'm sure they'll update them when they can. This is called Bobinette. This is BR24, sorry. So it's Brenda Ryan 24 traditional. So it's a pink. Then we have... Ooh, Number 415, this will be in the app. Uh, 415, Bonnie Brook, and it's a blue variegation. Bonnie Brook, so maybe a Scottish kind of tilt there. And LM27, oh my goodness, my brain. LM27, Baronia, and it is a purple and brown kind of arrangement. Yes. There we go. I see it more there. Okay, um, so if you're interested in any of these, Carolyn will consolidate the shipping. Um, cottage garden threads are getting more and more available over in the States. But if you can't get your hands on it, it may be worth your while getting costing to ship from Australia. Check it out. That's all I can suggest. Now, I was in the store the other day and collected the snowmen um that i was missing out so the snowman number two in cottage garden samplings is the clown and
and um, shepherd number uh, the shepherd is sh <laughs> snowman number three with the sheep so that's our spring one now she made a comment somebody had signed up to it thinking that it was actually the sneak peeks that she shows um and the sneak peeks that she shows is, is just kind of like two dots and she almost has snowmen showing but what she's doing is basically just got two circles as a reveal of what the actual design will be and when the person realized that it wasn't they cancelled their subscription i thought you know what that's actually fair enough because the sneak peeks how she's got it displaying is really really cool and it should be an embroidery just as is and now i'm kind of going yeah i don't know because i did collect the ones that i actually liked last year of a year in the woods but i didn't collect the ones that were like weird from my own mind which were the owl and there was something else that i didn't particularly like but so i've got things like the ferret and the bear and the eagle they were nice but the owl the, the head was just the neck was too long and twisted and it was just like mm, yeah pass on that one yeah but the sneak peeks are awesome the way that she's got the sneak peeks designed are um misleading yeah anyway we couldn't figure out what the so it starts in december so december is number one january is number two february is number three so january with the clown um and the circus tops and the shows and all of that kind of carnival kind of thing that's january and then spring i suppose with the sheep march we could not figure out what march sneak peek was i haven't looked at it recently um to see what the sneak peek is um and it's like ooh. March what would you have in March as a kind of monthly theme and I said the only thing March is good for up northern hemisphere is wind in Ireland um it was the windy month um March so I don't know we'll see what happens with number four um so that will be the next time around all right I'm gonna let you go and um I will see you guys in the next video don't forget if you would consider subscribing ring the bell for a notification when I upload a video again next and I will see you guys around the tubes Bye for now. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand.